Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Tuesday, December 7th. So today we do have the moon moving out of that Capricorn energy, which yeah, it might have been low and slow and it might have been hella realistic with a little bit of a bitch lap of reality coming at us, but highly productive, definitely determined, definitely know what we got to do right now. And now the moon is going to shift into Aquarian energy, locking in at about 7.50 a.m. again, Atlantic Standard Time. So why is this good for us? Well, because we were illuminated to the blocks and to the challenges. We were illuminated to where it is that we feel held back and restricted from actually moving forward. And the Aquarian energy not only opens our minds up, not only gives us a futuristic vision that we have to work with in order to plan and strategize how it is we're going to get from where it is that we're at to where it is that we want to be, but it sets us free. It triggers the inner rebellion within us that we need in order to fight for what is right, fight for what we need to do to be a little bit more independent and liberate ourselves from some of the very heavy rules and responsibilities that we just got illuminated to that we're no longer aligned with. So this is going to bode very well for us. This is going to be a very interesting energy because anytime that the sun is in a fire sign and the moon is in a air sign, you best believe we can either cultivate a beautiful, steady, uh, very warm fire or that fire might get out of control. So we better watch it, right? It is about balance, but we have a lot of thoughts, a lot of ideas, a lot of intellectual energy coming in from the Aquarian energy. And we have that action that, you know, just bold, courageous energy to want to make a move and make something happen coming from that fire energy. So we have 10 different aspects taking place with the moon here today. And nine of them are all about the moon transiting out of Capricorn energy, again, low and slow, very focused on this physical realm. And the interaction that shift with the planetary bodies as we move out of that low and slow earth energy and fly high into the sky with that air energy coming from Aquarius. So the moon bumps into Jupiter and this is still very much in Capricorn energy. So we're still kind of realistic. We're kind of still focused on pro productivity and what it is that we have control over. And the moon bumps into Jupiter in not such a nice way because, again, Jupiter is like our hype girl, reminding us of all the things that we want, all the things we want to do, all the things that we're working towards. And that moon in Capricorn just needs to turn that volume down on Jupiter just because Jupiter is a little bit extra and has a tendency to bite off more than what we know we can actually accomplish. So that's where the reality kind of kicks in and we kind of, again, tweak our big vision dreams in order to have a realistic approach on what it is that we're actually able to bring to life. So the moon is going to bump into Chiron. This time it's a good energy. We're bossing up in realizing where it is that we have more control over ourselves than we felt like we had. No doubt eclipse season made us all a little bit crazy. Okay, that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to create confusion so that we can humble ourselves and accept some dramatic changes that we wouldn't have otherwise made or been open to. And now the moon bumping into Chiron in this way is kind of letting us know that, you know what, we, we do have more control than we thought we had. And we do have more clarity than we thought we had. And we actually have more, you know, passion and energy and, and just readiness to take on this brand new chapter. And of course, Chiron, the wounded healer, he's illuminating for us all the work that we've done and what it is that we get to celebrate because we have been very productive, especially in processing our emotions. So the moon semi squares the sun. And any time that the moon and the sun bump into one another, it's kind of an overlap on where it is that the changes are actually happening within us. The moon, of course, is our emotions. It's our unconscious self. It is very much attached to the old patterns and behaviors that we're kind of being illuminated to that we have to let go of. And there's no better illumination than the sun. And the sun, who is in Sag, doesn't even want to think about the past. We just want to beeline to the future. Like our future vision, future dream could have manifested yesterday and it still wouldn't have been soon enough.
So there is an overlap. There's a tension here because what our physical realm is demanding of us is challenging the emotional growth that we know that we have to do, but we're finding ourselves slipping back into old patterns and behaviors that at one point we realize, damn, I really got to let go of this. I really got to change this. I really got to stop thinking this way in order to align to the version of ourselves that we need to be to start accepting the rewards, the blessings and abundance that the universe has in store for us. The moon trines the true node. And this is a beautiful energy because at this particular point in time, the moon is already moving into this Aquarian energy. So we're already feeling lighter. We don't feel the weight of the world on our shoulders. We don't feel it on our heart space. We're not focused on our roles and responsibilities and our commitments and the negative narrative and the blah, blah, blah. Instead, we are just like, damn, okay, I don't want to feel bogged down like that. How can I create something new? Where can I like switch up my thinking, switch up my perspective to free me out of these roles and responsibilities? Where do I need to recognize where it is that I'm being blocked? We just had the moon and the sun bump into one another, activating our old patterns and behaviors. The sun knows damn well that we have to leave those behind. So now it's kind of like, hmm, okay. What are we going to do with this? The moon in Aquarius is like, well, damn, let's just cut it off. Let's free ourselves. Let's liberate ourselves. Let's just, you know, keep all of that in the past where it belongs. And of course, the moon trining with the true node, the true node's like, yeah, you got to leave the past where it belongs in the past. You got to cut the cords, the emotional baggage. You got to cut all of that away and lighten the load in order to be the version of yourself that you want to be in your future vision and in your future dreams. Now, Mercury is going to square Neptune. Mercury, the ruler of our mental plane, ruling over our thoughts, our ideas, how we process information and how we communicate and express that outwardly is in a conflict, in a tension with Neptune that rules over our dreams, our imagination, our intuition. So this is a problem because our logical, practical mindset is at war with our intuition and our higher selves. The dreams and the imaginations that we've been having, the creative aspect that we've been unleashing, because of course, Neptune just went direct. All of that is now being blocked because our egoic narrative in our mental plane is like, well, that doesn't make sense. That's never going to happen. That doesn't even that doesn't even fit into the plan. How do you expect that to work? Right. Again, speaking fear into our future plans. Not only can that happen with other people, it can happen within us. That's why, you know, as soon as we take one step forward, those darker force energies, that negative narrative tries to get us to take a step back. So we are at odds with our intuition. We're really struggling in our mental plane, how we can feel so good about something that doesn't make sense. And yet, you know, how are we supposed to make a plan out of just a feeling, right? So we're kind of at odds in the mental plane. We can't sort it out. And I will say that communication is not going to be our strong suit right now. We are not being heard right. We're not being understood. We're not being validated. We might have a lot to say. We might have some very important things to say, but we're not going to be received the way that we want. So we may, we may as well not even bother at this point. The moon is going to go ahead and make a little bit of attention with both Neptune and Mercury. So after Mercury and Neptune have this little square off, then we throw our emotions into it. Now, our emotions, especially with Neptune, well, the moon in Aquarius is all about, you know, let's think outside of the box. Let's push ourselves outside of our boundaries. Let's think futuristically. How can we grow? How can we improve? How can we just cut the cord from the past? And Neptune is like, hmm, okay, higher self, these dreams that we're having. Okay, yes, I do agree, but there is a process to it. We have to trust our gut. What is our gut saying? Well, we don't get a chance to really check in with our gut because Mercury, the mental plane, has us very stuck in a negative narrative that is based off of logic and practicality. And of course, intuitional gut feelings aren't logical all the time. They aren't practical. We can't make sense of some of the intense feelings or the visions that we get, the aha moments, the inspirations, the new passions and pursuits that we're being triggered to, to follow and bring to life. We can't make sense of that. So now we're at odds between our heart and our head because our heart, the moon in Aquarius is saying, 
screw all that, think outside of the box, trust the plan, trust the faith, have all this confidence that everything is going to work out. Just trust that everything is going to snap together and it's just going to blow your mind. And of course, Mercury over here, right? Uh, Just like speaking fear, speaking the most negative narrative into our dreams and plans. Why? Because it doesn't make sense. Because it doesn't make sense. Well, that is a huge downfall for our egoic minds at this particular point, because Mercury, who is in Sag, is on a quest of truth. And right now we're questioning the truth around us, but we're also questioning, questioning the truth that is alive and well in us. And right now, our old egoic narrative doesn't see how it is that we can shift our thinking so quickly can't see how we're supposed to pivot and take a new direction so quickly. Sometimes our ego self needs us to, you know, gracefully and slowly ease ourselves into these big, huge changes and transformations. But we're in Sag season. We don't have time for that. We need to act on inspiration now. We have a fire lit within us. The spark, the passion has come back. We need to take action. We need to do something now. And we're going to get an opportunity to do that when the moon goes ahead and bumps into Mars. So Mars, as you know, rules over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our will, and our anger, if we're not careful. But this is a harmonious aspect, which means that the moon in Aquarius, that is a little bit emotionally detached and for good reason, because we do have to kind of disconnect from the emotions, keeping us very low and slow and present in this present moment to allow our minds to wander futuristically to a dream and a vision in which we actually feel good about and actually want to start creating. So the moon bumping into Mars in this way, this is like firing us up in all the right ways. This is triggering our passion, triggering our intensity, bumping us up in our determination, in our self-confidence to actually pursue what it is that feels right. Again, earlier, we were at odds because, you know, the feeling that we're having versus the logic that we're, you know, trying to make sense of, they're in a conflict. But this particular aspect is going to renew our faith that trusting our gut, trusting our feeling, trusting our new vision is the right way to go. The moon is going to sextile Chiron. And this is a beautiful energy for us to kind of break free from some of the heavier emotions that we've been experiencing over the last little bit to recognize where it is that guess what? We're just going to cut the cord, right? We talked about this in the Ascension forecast. When are we going to give ourselves permission to cut the cord with the past? We know damn well that we have to do it because we can't, we can't make decisions in our here and now based off of our past experiences. Why? Because our past experiences were being you know, dictated from an unconscious operating system that we now know we're no longer aligned with. So that doesn't make sense. So we have this realization and we realize now where it is that we have to actually adopt new ways of doing things, open our mind up, open our heart up, change up our behaviors. And this is a prime opportunity of us getting to celebrate the awareness that we have of the growth in which we've already accomplished. Lastly, we're going to wrap the day up with the moon conjunct sitting next to bumping into Saturn, the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles and responsibilities, ruling over us bossing up in life. And the moon in Aquarius bumping into Saturn in Aquarius is a huge, huge, profound aha moment, a vision for the future on where it is that we have to cut the cord with the past, especially with the roles and responsibilities, the commitments that were a little bit overwhelming in the previous couple of days. The moon in Aquarius is here to free us from that. And Saturn is trying to show us where it is that we have to build new relationships, new routines, new foundations, new systems, new structures to free us from the overwhelming weight that we bear on our shoulders, on our heart space. If we continue to repeat the same past patterns and behaviors and we do nothing to break free from the reality which we know we are no longer aligned with.